What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we got to four link the back of the FJ40 Land Cruiser. So if you guys missed the last few videos, we went through and three linked the front end of this thing. We got that all dialed in. Now we got to jump on the back and get this rear four link. So what we got for an axle, if you guys aren't familiar, is a Sterling out of a Ford F350. This is a Sterling 10 and a half inch. The front is a Dana 60 out of the same F350. So we got one ton axles. Like I said, we're doing three link front, four link in the rear. Now the rear should be a lot easier than the front. The front was kind of a pain just because all the steering, everything was so tight up there, but we made it work. We got it dialed in. So let's jump right into this one, get this axle underneath, get it centered, get it positioned where we want it. And then we can grab our four link calculator, kind of calculate all the links, figure out exactly what we're doing for our brackets. And you guys know we got the plasma table. We're gonna cut all of our brackets ourselves. We're making this from scratch. So I think that's the best way, the funnest way to do it at least, instead of buying all the brackets. I think it's a lot more fun building it all. So that is the game plan, let's get to work. All right, I'm not gonna go into too much depth here, but we got everything drawn up on this four link calculator. This is the, the last version 4.0 where you can actually enter the front and the rear end. So we got everything entered in and here's some numbers. So basically you have your roll center here, which it shows roll center height right here, 28.8 inches. Uh, and then the front was 25 inches. That basically is a percentage of the center of gravity. So I have mine set at 37 inches. So we're right about 77, 75% uh, of roll axis to center of gravity. So that's actually what they kind of recommend for like a general use trail rig. If you're like strictly, strictly rock crawling, you want a little bit higher just to help with a body roll. But other than that, we're looking really good. We got uh, all of our links right here set up. Now these are all guesses. Once we actually build it, we might have to tweak a little bit here and there, but I went and measured everything. That's about what we got. So I'm gonna build out all my brackets off of these numbers here. So basically all these numbers are basically the height where you're, everywhere your links mount. So the height off the ground to the axle, to the frame, the width, and all that good stuff. So another important thing to look at is the roll axis angle. You want that around zero. I'm negative two. The going negative is less oversteer and less body roll. So I think that's gonna be really nice. Um, one thing I'm gonna do, and I did on the front as well, is I made the upper link mount adjustable so I can move it up or down. I'll probably do three holes on the rear. I did two on the front just for, cause I didn't have really a lot of room. So let's get some metal out. The axle's about where I want it. You can see the tires are just barely sticking out from the back, which is that's what I wanted.
Well, here we go wasting more metal. Now this time I'm actually happy to do it because with what we're doing with this lower link mount, combining these together, this is gonna solve a few problems and future problems for when we actually bring this thing out in the woods. Now, first things first, it just looks so much better having this mount like this. And another thing is it's gonna be a lot stronger with both lower link mounts tied together, welded to the frame inside and out, all gusted it up. It's gonna be so much stronger than having two separate brackets. Now, last but not least, when this truck is done and we're out in the woods playing around on the rocks or whatever, there's a lot lot less chance of getting hung up on this with this style with actual steel kind of combining the two mounts there's just a lot less sharp edges and kind of those big brackets just hanging down with designing the bracket like this it is going to just slide over the rocks a lot easier a lot less chance of getting hung up on something now i will say designing this bracket this way is a little more tricky than separate brackets especially because we have the transmission cross member kind of right in the middle of this bracket so the outside frame plate not a big deal it's gonna weld right to the frame. And then as you can see, I bent these sides out. They're angled out about 15 degrees to kind of keep these heim joints straight. And that's uh, it's gonna be a little more tricky that way. So we got a lot of work to do. We gotta get a little creative on the inside to kind of wrap around the transmission cross member and tie this all in nice and sturdy. But with some metal, some bending, some welding, I think we'll get this thing dialed in.
Look at that guys, we did it. This four link in the back, I think, is gonna work out perfect without wasting a bunch more metal. So we got it flexed out. Obviously we're gonna have more droop than this, uh, but that side is about stuffed up to where the tire is stuffed into the fender. And I don't see any issues. Everything, I mean, we got plenty of clearance everywhere. So you can see how much I pointed up this pinion. Now, I am gonna be running a double carden joint at the transfer case. So when you have that set up with a double carden, that's why you wanna bring your pinion. You wanna point it straight at that flange. And what the good thing about that is, you get a lot better drive shaft angle because the pinion itself is way higher. And with the pinion obviously up out of the way, it's a lot better for not smacking on stuff. So I think we're ready to go. Um, I don't see anything that we really need to change. Now I'm not done with these mounts for the lower links. I still, there's a kind of an open spot in the middle here, but I can't really weld anything in there because I need that open to be able to pull that transfer case or the transmission cross member out. So what I might have to do I'm not gonna do it right now, it'll be a future video, but I think I'm going to try to just kind of bolt on a little bracket on the back side. That way it's a lot stronger and it looks a lot better. With tying everything in on the back side it is gonna strengthen it so much. So I think we are looking good. I'm happy with it. All my numbers look really good on the calculator, so I think we are good to go. Well guys, we are good to go on the front three link and the rear four link, so now I don't think this PVC is really gonna hold up to the abuse I'm gonna put it through. So we're gonna go ahead and order some real links up. I don't know how long it's gonna take, so we do have some downtime, but good thing, we got a lot more fun stuff to do. We got to, I have front coilovers. I need to measure and order for rear, but we do have fronts and we need to get those all mounted up. We need to order some rears, get those mounted up. Also, we gotta pull off basically all of our mounts. Oh, they're just tacked together, so I wanna pull the mounts off. I wanna weld them all on the table just because it's a lot easier for me at least to just get a good, solid, sound weld when it's right in front of me and I can move it around. So we're gonna do that next video, probably pull all this basically all this stuff apart, every bracket pretty much off of the frame and the axles and weld all the brackets together. We do still have to figure out, like I said, finish up that center bracket for the lower links. Like I said, I can't weld anything in the center because the transmission cross members in the way. So it's got a bolt on. That might be a little tricky to figure out, but it's just metal. We can make something work there. But either way, I am gonna wrap this one up here. I gotta go give Summit Machine a call. We gotta get some links on the way. So I'm gonna go do that. I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.